Could spoil things for their arch rivals in Stillwater. Second quarter, second down and four. The orange clad Cowboys in front of their home crowd. Zach Robinson finds Kendall Hunter. Five catches, 46 yards. Pokes go up. No, oh, just a tremendous job there. Zach Robinson keeping the play alive till he could find Mr. Hunter. First time Stoops troops have trailed since the loss to Texas in mid October. First and goal though for the Sooners. Chris Brown right up the gut. Oklahoma up 14 10. Under 30 seconds to go in the half. Sam Bradford fumbles it. Ori Lemon takes it from him, but take another look. Bradford bobbled bobble a couple of snaps in this night. The ball's just rolling around. Oklahoma State coach is challenged to play, but a rule that is still the Sooners ball. So Oklahoma catches a break. They're up by one. Bradford to Jermaine Gresham. I love how Sam Bradford scans the field, particularly in the red zone, and looks for the tight end. Gresham, he does a great job down there. He's got great hands for a big fella. Look at Bradford. Had to have that thumb taped up in the second half. It's 21-13 now. Zach Robinson to Hunter, and Hunter puts it on the ground, and seemingly the Sooners have forced a turnover. Nick Harris jumped on it, but the officials rule it was not a fumble on the field. Now the Cowboys catch a break and they're moving the ball. Here's Robinson, Des Bryant. Oh, Des Bryant's had a tremendous game. He had only scored one touchdown away from home, but I think 15 at home. He had two today. Robinson, a tremendous play to avoid the rush, and there is Des Bryant. Six catches, 92 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and the Pokes are right in it now, 21-19. Now it was too early to go for two, Mayday, and Frank Alexander made him pay. And that's being Johnny on the spot. Frank Alexander heads up on this play. The big fellow's going to take it all the way for the two-point conversion for the Sooners. 23-19 to instead of 21-20. How large would that loom? Next OU possession, Bradford. Now this, Kevin Wilson's drawing up some great trick plays. <laughs> He's the offensive coordinator. There's a Pontiac game-changing nominee. It went right through Manny Johnson's hand, and Gresham was there. Well, it have to be in the right place at the right time, but they, unbelievable how many touchdowns in a row Oklahoma scored. And Oklahoma State matching them stride for stride. On a fourth down play, Zach Robinson houses it. Cowboys down by four, still in the third quarter, third and goal. Bradford was brilliant on third down throughout the game. Scrambling, watch the athlete giving up his body. Did not convert that particular third down, but that only set the stage. Boy, he went into whirly bird mold. That's like a, the old Nat Moore play. Bradford fumbled the snap again, but picked it up and scored. Oklahoma up 37-26, but Robinson would come right back. There's Des Bryant. There's no way you can leave Des Bryant as tall as he is with the long arms to get by you in the back of the end zone. Two-point conversion. There's Des Bryant. Again, unbelievable the statistics he has at home. And that was a great throw and a great catch. 37-34, but the Sooners come right back again on fourth and goal. I mean, Bradford got it right in the mustache before he hit Brody Eldridge. Now a 10-point lead for Oklahoma, but not anymore. Parrish Cox. Parrish Cox, eighth in the country in kickoff returns. What a fabulous job of determination not going down. He knew that he was not going to go down on this play. He was going to keep his balance and stay up. And right here, they should be able to bring him down. He gets hit by defenders. He keeps his feet. What tremendous balance. So fourth kickoff return for a touchdown against the Sooners this year. But you got Bradford, you can give up stuff like this. Joaquin Iglesias, Sooners pulled away late. They won it by 20. Number one, Alabama, trying to stop a six-game losing streak to Auburn, one that has been a thorn in the side of the Crimson Tide. And Glenn Coffey, strong coffee. Gets some tremendous blocking on the right side by the right tackle and tight end. Reads that well, takes it to the sidelines, and he's gone. Drew Davis, that right tackle, doing a good job all year. Right before the half, Morgan Hull lines one up and boots it through from 40 yards. But uh, Saban called a timeout right before he kicked it. He had to try it again, and Alabama blocked it. And Saban was much pleased. 10 0. Second half, the wheels come off for the Tigers. Brad Lester fumbles it. Alabama recovers. First play after the fumble. Offensive coordinator Jim McElwain wants to go for it all. John Parker Wilson, Nikita Stover. Well, just a nice job of adjusting his route. There was an out cut when the corner jumped it. He turned it up wide open. Parker saw him. Parker Wilson saw him and his touchdown. 16 0 lead. That was probably enough, but Cody Burns put it on the ground. And the ensuing possession, the freshman Mark Ingram goes in 22 to nothing. And Coffee had 144 yards. Ingram added 64 more and a couple of touchdowns. And Alabama obliterates Auburn 36 to nothing. 
First shutout against the Tigers since 1992, the last year Alabama won the national championship. Florida and Florida State. Gators, same situation as Alabama. Win your games, go to the national championship game. Against the Seminoles, Jeff Demps. He's a sprinter, all of that speed. He wanted to go to Florida State. They didn't recruit him, thought he was too small. Apparently fast enough. Here's Tebow in a 7-3 game for Aaron Hernandez. All right, just a crossing route in wide open. And it's hard to throw a football that's waterlogged. He sort of threw it like a shot put. Percy Harvin, who scored a touchdown earlier in the game, left with a sprained ankle. They'll know more about his status on Sunday, about whether he can play against Alabama. And Tim Tebow carried 75 guys into the end zone. Oh, defensive tackle. Look at that face, Mark. Backers. I love that shot right there. We'll see that forever. You know, some people say that was paint, not blood. It doesn't matter. I'm saying it's blood. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. It was tough. It looked, it's football. Got your back, Reese. All right. Tebow to Hernandez again. Gators rolling. Florida was scoring touchdowns while the Seminoles were kicking field goals and throwing interceptions. Christian Ponder picked off by Brandon Spikes and Tebow under pressure. Tebow would have three passing touchdowns, ran for another, threw for 185 yards, ran for 80 more. Here's Lewis Murphy. Gators, another blowout. 45 to 15. The be played against Oregon. It was totally irrelevant. Oregon State needed only to win to go to the Rose Bowl for the first time since the 1964 season. Here is Jeremiah Johnson in the early going. Mark, he ran for over 200 yards in the first half. And a terrific job by the offensive line of pulling out on that. Get some great blocks, but what a nice job of taking his speed and taking it down the sidelines inside the tent. Well, Garrett Blount went for over 100 yards. Yes, and here he sets an Oregon new rushing record for touchdowns with his 16th of the year. Ducks up 17 to 7. Oregon leads 23 to 10. They're just trying to run off the clock in the first half. There goes Johnson. Off the right side again. And there he flips the ball, gets knocked up in the air. He still comes down with it and takes it 83 yards all the way in for the score. They would take a 30 to 10 lead to the half, or would they? First play on the ensuing drive. Lyle Moyval. Oops. Picked Walter Thurman. Wearing number six, scoring six. 37 to 10 at halftime. Third quarter, Boy Val, who threw for 374 yards and five touchdowns. Shea Morales, here come the Beavers. But, Bilotti, don't you think you're a little bit tough on the Beavers? Jeremiah Masoli. Masoli had a terrific day. 11 to 17, 274, an escape at Ed Dixon. 65 to 38. The most points Oregon State has ever given up. 694 yards of offense. The most Oregon's ever gotten. Oregon State probably not going to the Rose Bowl. USC stepping out of conference play to take on Notre Dame. Why is this team trying to pull the huge upset? And by upset, I mean getting a first down. Jimmy picked off. Kaluka Mayava with the pick and suing possession. Joe McKnight. Oh, this is Joe McKnight's first rushing touchdown of the season. Outstanding job. Gets a great block, block by his fullback, Avili. And look at him. He turns the safety around just by hitting to the outside, coming back to the inside. Touchdown, Trojans. First touchdown of any kind since the season opener against Virginia. Sanchez to Damian Williams. Uh, this was just a delay uh, mistake on Notre Dame's part. They had three guys covering one. Nobody covered Williams. In a 31 nothing game, why would you show a run at the end of the third quarter? Oh, because it's their first first down of the game. Ow. They had nine yards in the first half. What is an embarrassing, awful performance. Jimmy Clausen to Robert Hughes, and then there, well, there were some unpleasantries along the sideline. Ends up with USC clobbering Notre Dame 38-3. Here's Baylor. Hoped Oklahoma would lose to make it to the Big 12 title game. Tech trailing 13-7 in the second quarter. Graham Harrell, and he has forever. He threw for 300 yards, couple of touchdowns again, and uh, now Michael Crabtree on the sideline. Crabtree was hurt on the play. He came down awkwardly on his right ankle. No update on that ankle, but it was nasty, and he did not return to the game after that. The likely Bulletnikoff Award winner again. Opening drive, third quarter for Baylor. Jacoby Jones, and Baylor is up 28-14. Art Bryles, their new coach who played there, trying to spring the upset. No Crabtree to come out and try to save them, but they did have Shannon Woods made a... And you look at this Texas Tech team, they're able to battle back in this game, and Shannon Woods just takes it over the top. Good job by the offensive line of going low, cutting down some of those defensive linemen. And then it's Baron Batch's turn. It's amazing. With all the passing, it was a running game that brought him back. 
28-28, a guy that we've called a program changer for the Bears. Robert Griffin completed 12 of 15 passes on the day. That one he could have completed, but on the deflection, it's picked off by Brian Duncan, and then Harrell would find Detron Lewis. Terrific job by the offensive line. Look at the time he has. He can wait out the patterns, and right there, Detron Lewis at the corner of the end zone. Nice job by the offense. Tech wins, and by the way, Graham Harrell's going to have surgery on him. Virginia Tech could beat Virginia. They would go to the ACC championship game, but the Cavaliers... Some trickery. Vic Hall playing quarterback. Well, he played a lot of quarterback in high school, but he's now a defensive back in the first half. 77 yards on nine carries and two touchdowns. This guy had one career carry coming into the game. Greg Boone also took some snaps for Tech. Oh, I love this wild turkey formation by Virginia Tech. <laughs> <laughs> it can leave you a little loopy, that wild turkey, every now and then. 17-14, Tech had the lead. Mark Verica, oh, they were in field goal range, or at least close to it, and he threw a pick in the end zone. And then Virginia had one more chance under a minute to go. Pernell Sturdivant comes up with the sack, and Virginia Tech wins it 17-14, much to the delight of Bud Foster and that hokey defense. They get the job done to go to the championship game. The Wheel of Destiny spinning. For Boston College against Maryland, Chris Crane, starting quarterback out of there. Maryland's Chris Turner's been terrific. Watch Mike McLaughlin. Oh, what a play. Check this out again. He went all no Sean Marino on us. <laughs> Up and over. Yamo will be there. Napoleon Dynamite goes down. Great, great play by the Boston College defense. They've carried this team. Dominique Davis making his first start, Lou to Rich Gunnell. Well, this is just a great throw and a great catch, but how a guy got that wide open, you'd have to see it on film. Look at Jeff Jagosinski coming up with the trick ration with Doug Flutie's nephew, Billy. I like the fake throw over the head. This is the LSU play and the play that Nebraska tried on Friday that didn't work. Worked perfectly for BC. Flutie to Jordan McMichael. Flutie's first career touchdown pass. 21-7 Boston College. Now 21-14. And Turner picked off by Robert Francois. And why not? Boston College, after all, leads the nation in interceptions coming into the game. They've scored a non-offensive touchdown in seven straight games. They're off to the title game. Jags and his leather jacket going. Now, Georgia and Mark Rick, he had never lost to Georgia Tech. Tech eliminated from consideration for the ACC title hunt, but they didn't really care. They just wanted to get this dog monkey off their back. Matthew Stafford, Mohamed Massaqua. Stafford threw for five touchdowns. Dogs were up 28-12 at halftime, seemingly cruising. But the first play of the second half, Jonathan Dwyer. Well, he's just going to see a nice option here. Tremendous running there, not particularly good tackling. Jonathan Dwyer is one of the better backs in the country. He's only a sophomore. Leads the ACC, I believe, in rushing. Went for 144 in this game. Now, Georgia Tech had scored a tie to 28. The kickoff after that, Richard Samuel's going to put it on the ground. Tech recovers, and on, if you see the ball comes loose just before the knee strikes down, Tech is all over it. The very next play, here goes Dwyer, Mayday. Terrific job of blocking right up the middle, but keep an eye on Dwyer. The defender has the angle on him, and right to oh. look at the cut. Lights out, he's gone. Supportive undergarments lying close to the hedges in Athens. Mark Rick brings his team together after being outscored 26 to nothing in the third quarter. Georgia down 10. Here goes no shot. 168 yards. Georgia back within three, but on Tech's ensuing possession, Roddy Jones, Roddy Jones was craving a helmet sticker, Lou. He goes for over 200 yards. Well, just they run that option so well. And the problem is if you don't tackle like you see a missed tackle there, big things are going to happen for the opposition. 45 points, wow. A Tech ran for over 400. Missouri's second most played rivalry in the game. Mizzou had already locked up the Big 12 North. Fourth quarter, Tigers down 33-30. Chase Daniel running with it, maybe. Chase Daniel, such a terrific quarterback. What great heart. Not only throwing the ball, but he picks up first downs running the ball. That converted a third down on a first and goal. Derek Washington gives Missouri the lead. 37-33. Kansas with the ball now. Same score. Time becoming an issue, ticking down toward a minute. Todd Reesing threw for 375 yards and four touchdowns. And here, a 
critical first down. Kerry Meyer, catch was reviewed, got the hands under it, Luke. Uh, he's just done a tremendous job. That was a former quarterback. He was a quarterback of the future until Todd Reesing came on the scene. A fourth and seven, pretty much the last chance for Reesing. Buys a little time, and a Pontiac game-changing nominee. There is Meyer. 14 catches, 106 yards. The fighting man, Geno's jubilant as they take the lead. But Daniel has some time. Finds Jared Perry in the middle. And now, Mizzou in the mustard-colored jerseys and field goal range. It's only kind of gold. Five seconds to go. Jeff Wolford from 54 yards out. Toe meets leather. Leather meets Jayhawk. Rock, chalk, Jayhawk. KU. Kansas wins it 40 to 37. Fort Lane Kiffin takes over and greeting some of his seniors on what was an emotional night. Two seconds left in the half, a fourth and goal play. Jonathan Crompton sneaks in, volunteers up by fourth to break. Third quarter, a rarely seen big play for Tennessee. Crompton to Denarius Moore, 63 yards. Tennessee wins it 28-10, 24th straight time. They've beaten Kentucky and Fulmer, who's done so much and been such an integral part of.